Good morning. Death of a Prince. Monaco's Prince Rainier, the great love of Grace Kelly, passes away this morning. And the Pope's last wishes, as more than a million mourners file past his body, the College of Cardinals prepares to read Pope John Paul II's last writings today, Wednesday, April 6, 2005. From NBC News, this is Today with Katie Couric and Matt Lauer, live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. And welcome to Today on this Wednesday morning, everyone. I'm Katie Couric. And I'm Matt Lauer. More sad news to report this morning. Monaco's 81-year-old Prince Rainier was Europe's longest-serving monarch, more than 50 years, but he was probably best known for his glamorous marriage to Grace Kelly. And coming up, we're going to look back at what is probably a fairy tale often laced with tragedy. That's right. They've had a lot of hardships in that family, and uh, he's been sick for some time. Right, this so. has been expected. That's right. Meanwhile, Matt, as President Bush travels to Rome this morning, along with the First Lady, Condoleezza Rice and former Presidents Bush and Clinton. The question some people are asking is, where's President Carter in all this? Are the Bushes and the Carters the modern day version of the Hatfields and the McCoys? We're going to find out what's going on. Plus a friend and an admired competitor in the fight of his life. In a dramatic announcement, NBC's Peter Jennings told the world last night using his trademark style, dignity and grace that he has been diagnosed with lung cancer. We'll have much more on that story. Supermodels, but good morning, good morning everybody. Air Force One carries the president to Rome today for the funeral of Pope John Paul on Friday. This is hundreds of thousands continue to pay tribute at the Vatican today. NBC's Campbell Brown is in Vatican City this morning. NBC's Nora O'Donnell is at the White House. Let's begin from the with the latest from the Vatican. Campbell, good morning. Good morning, Anne. The Italian government is warning the elderly and people with small children not to come to the Basilica. They say the wait is just too long. It's averaging 12 hours with as many as 15 to 18,000 people per hour going through the Basilica to pay their respects. The crowd outside of St. Peter's late last night, people patiently waiting their turn, Romans and pilgrims who've traveled here from all over the world. He meant a lot to me in my life. I believe, I believe everything he's done. I believe in him. And um, I came all the way from New York just to see this. In the chilly early morning hours, people huddled under blankets. But later in the day, as temperatures rose, some fainted and had to be treated for dehydration. And today, signs of the number of people descending on the city is becoming increasingly difficult to manage. In the streets around Rome, it's semi-controlled chaos with traffic snarled. At Rome's main train station, an additional 60,000 people are arriving each day. Workers are furiously trying to build enough temporary tent cities so people will have a place to sleep. Local vendors, though, are cashing in, setting up stalls around the Vatican to sell memorabilia, with demand high for rosaries, t-shirts, and photos of John Paul II. Now, earlier today, the College of Cardinals met for the third time. They are reading the Pope's final writings and are expected to soon announce a date for their conclave to elect the next Pope. Anne? All right, Campbell at the Vatican. Thank you, Campbell. Now let's go to NBC's Nora O'Donnell at the White House. She's got details on who is in the U.S. delegation to the funeral and who is not, Nora. Good morning. And good morning to you. The White House insists that they reached out to President Carter and invited him to attend, but Carter said he withdrew his request to attend the funeral once he was told by the White House that its space was limited. Today, President Bush and his wife Laura lead the U.S. delegation to Rome. What a great man. Uh, it'll be my honor to, to represent our country. Um, at a ceremony marking a remarkable life, a person who stood for freedom and human dignity. The White House says the Vatican limited the official delegation to just five people. Joining the President and First Lady, former Presidents Bush and Clinton, and Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. But not President Carter, who was the first and only President to welcome the Pope to the White House in 1979. Carter's spokesman said in a statement, President Carter expressed to the White House a desire to attend the Pope's funeral. He was quite willing to withdraw his request when he was subsequently informed that the official delegation would be limited to just five people. The story of an admired colleague in the fight of his life. In a brave and touching gesture, his throat raw, ABC's Peter Jennings announced to the world last night that he is battling lung cancer. NBC's Peter Alexander has more. Peter, good morning. 
Good morning, Matt. It is heartbreaking news for his friends, colleagues, and loyal viewers. Peter Jennings, the face of ABC News for 22 years, revealed his illness and said he will work when he can. As some of you now know, I have learned in the last couple of days that I have lung cancer. Yeah. Clearly hoarse, Peter Jennings, ABC's legendary newsman, broke the very personal news to his audience last night. I will continue to do the broadcast. On good days, my voice will not always be like this. Jennings, who quit smoking 20 years ago, said he will begin chemotherapy next week. You would not choose chemotherapy or radiation over surgery in general if the patient has limited stage early stage disease. The 66-year-old Jennings is the last of a generation of long-standing news anchors. Since December, viewers have witnessed a dramatic shift in network news landscape. Thanks for all that I have learned from you. First, That's NBC's Tom Brokaw stepped down after 21 That's years as lead anchor. We've shared a lot. In then, last month, CBS's Dan Rather gave up the desk. You were trusting these people to tell you the truth, and somebody like Jennings is a rare commodity these days. He's hugely important. From the Vatican, NBC's Brian Williams sent his best wishes. While he is a competitor, and they don't make them any tougher, he is also a colleague and a friend, and they don't make them any better. Jennings showed some of that toughness last night. I've been reminding my colleagues today, who have all been incredibly supportive, that almost 10 million Americans are already living with cancer, and I have a lot to learn from them. And living is the key word. Jennings admitted he began smoking again after 9-11. He also wrote an email to his colleagues saying, quote, there will be good days and bad. That means some days I may be cranky, other days very cranky. Still, he said, he's prepared to face this new challenge. Matt. All right, Peter Alexander, thanks very much. And of course, we want to wish Peter Jennings a complete and speedy recovery. It's 15 after the hour. Once again, here's Katie. All right, Matt, thank you so much. The Michael Jackson trial is in recess today after more dramatic testimony on Tuesday.